to be honest with everybody here, you know, I'm sure everybody's, you know, tuning in. It's been a couple of weeks now. Thank you guys for joining this is the new episode. Uh, but to be honest with you all, you know, I think it might be time to be just to be canceled. You know, it's it's kind of like taking a day off nowadays. I feel like, you know, getting canceled used to be and has been a bad thing for a lot of people. You know, uh, people have lost uh, opportunities. People have lost money. People have, you know, lost their way of living. And, you know, I'm almost at this point looking at getting canceled as like, hey, that's a vacation. Because I've seen some people get canceled for really bad things, you know, and I'm sure everybody else has. So, you know, you can close your eyes, think about someone who's been canceled and what are they doing now? Chances are they're still living pretty good and, uh, they have less work to do. And I'm not trying to say like, oh, I'm tired of this, but it's like, man, I feel like at the age I'm, I, I hit, you know, I hit, uh, 27 this year. Wait. Yeah. I think I hit 27 this year and I don't know what it's been. You know, last episode we talked about the, the frontal cortex of the brain we didn't get scientific in it at all, but, you know, we talked about it. And I feel like that's been happening even just a little bit more with me. And um, I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's the hair growing out and I'm, like, holding more stuff. Because, you know, in, in native country, a lot of people like to say, oh, you know, you have long hair, you're holding a lot with you. That's why when you cut it and a certain amount of inches rep- represents a certain amount of years of things that you've been holding. This is what I've been hearing you know of culminating of tribes that i've been to not a certain one or the one i'm from particular but that one and um you know it could be a lot of things it could be the the quarter life crisis it could be the long hair it could be getting older you know shoulders cracking in different ways your knees you know you got to stretch before you play basketball now you know there was a time i'm like oh stretching's overrated dude i don't need to stretch and now i'm like all right, are these shoes going to be good for this event? Dude, I used to, I'm still young, by the way. I still want to, I want to make that out there. And I got a lot to be grateful for. Got a lot of youth left. But man, there used to be a time I'd be wearing Nike Cortezes to everything I did for runs, playing basketball, walking, whatever. Now it's like, man, I got to make sure the shoes I'm, I'm using are applicable to this thing. I'm going to, uh, I'm going for a run. I need these running shoes. You know, I'm walking into the, the trash can, I need my Crocs. You know, I'm trying to look nice. I'll put on the Adidas flat top ones or whatever they are. And, um, yeah, I mean, I, I've also kind of gotten to the point now with shoes. I used to be a real flashy guy with shoes. I used to be like, yeah, you know, I got to make sure my shoe game's on point. Now I'm kind of like, hey, what's comfortable? You know, what's comfortable and what's going to go with a lot of my outfits? Because I used to have, like, pairs of shoes that would go with like one or two outfits now it's like all right if i'm gonna get those shoes how many outfits can i wear that are gonna look good and presentable you know to the people um but yeah you know i got a lot on the list today you know a lot of stuff i want to talk to you guys about um real excited about it real excited to be here um thank you guys so much for being here we're gonna um, actually cue up the intro you know it's actually getting a little bit nicer out so we might change up the vibe here we were with the grunge a little bit this past couple episodes but i think we're gonna revert back to the you know just some chill vibes right now it's a window down type music time you know it's time to open that sunroof uh you know let the windows down maybe a quarter you know we're not all the way windows down yet but we're getting there And, um, yeah, let's get right into this. Been looking at, uh... I've been looking at RVs, man. RVs are, um, you know, here's the thing. When I used to think about RVs, I used to be like, I don't really, I don't know if RV living's for me. Let me clear off this table here a little bit. I don't know if RVs are for me. I used to have the stigma against RVs, and I used to love them. My grandpa actually has a couple RVs, and we would always go in the RVs and hang out. You know, as kids, we'd get to go in there, and he'd be like, all right, you guys can stay the night in there. 
you know, but uh, if you guys got to come inside, you guys can go to the bathroom and go back out there. You know, he was real um, all about us having independence. And same with my mom and other cousins too. And um, But, you know, RVs. I've been looking at getting an RV um, maybe for the pod too. Um, also for lots of things. But, um, yeah, so that's very interesting to me. Um, getting an RV, but what else has been going on with me lately? What else has been going on with you guys? I know a lot of people have been busy. Spring's coming around here in Washington because that is where we are, um, or I am at least, but um, we're actually coming out of general council season. General council is um, something here that happens in Tulalip, and uh, new leaders are elected, and it gets real political, and just like we're getting a little political in this pod, a lot of people like get that little squeamish feel. You know, like, oh, man, what are we going to talk about politics for? And I promise you, this isn't going to get that political. It's going to make some observations. And before I go out and say anything, I want to say congrats to the people who did win and the people who ran. Good for you guys. And I know people may listen to just the little bits and pieces of this, but if they, you know, like to actually see what I want to hear, they would listen to the full thing. Um, but, yeah, general counsel came about. And you know what? I'll be honest with you guys. I, I went in and I left. And that is, um, some people asking, what does that mean? Oof, you know, I'm not from Tulalip. What does that mean? So general council, there's motions that are passed and, you know, membership. And they say, oh, this is what we should do. These are people, they're, you know, trying to better the tribe in some way. Um, whether that would be for the tribe's gain, family gain, financial gain, um, opportunity gain, like lots of things that could happen. And me, you know, I don't know what I had going I think it was me and my grandpa we showed up we voted and we left and there was something you know there there's this guilt that we have and we put on each other for who isn't at the most events of your own tribe and i i feel like this is something that needs to be talked about because you know you can't make every event and you're not going to make every event and if you do good hands up to you you know but where does this cut where does that come from it's kind of like okay to be the most part most involved you have to go to everything i you know i've actually heard this and you know i may i may get canceled for this and you know what like i said in the beginning maybe it's time but i've heard this a lot and i I just don't know if i agree with it and that could be because i'm young and you please take this the right way but i've heard that people say hey if you want to get in a leadership position you have to go to all the funerals in in the community and May I say that part of that I think is correct. I think showing up for the community, if you know the people af- affected and you know the family and you show up, that is amazing. Hands up to you and happy for you. But to uh, say you didn't know everybody and you're just going to go to because you want to be in the community, I, I don't think using somebody's funeral as a, a way of personal gain, I, I just don't know if that sounds good to me. And I feel like I've seen this on Facebook. I don't remember who was talking about it, but I do kind of agree with that point. And, you know, I may have ancestors rolling in the grave for saying that, but I might have them rolling in the grave for me going to a university. Them rolling in the grave for other things too, you know. Uh, sometimes I get cold when it's not really that cold. And, you know, they, they were out there canoeing in fucking, you know, 25 degree weather, you know there's there's bits and pieces and you know take what you want but general counsel was a, a thing and i i feel like when i went there everybody has this you know like you're one away and uh bingo feeling to one another animosity is a, one of my favorite words to use in that situation and i you know how people can get the the bug you know people can get the the sickness they could break a leg they could go through a mental breakdown I feel like going to those things sometimes, not not saying necessarily this year, can trigger that for a lot of people. And that's probably why a lot of people don't go. Like, ah, I'm not trying to be around that. You know, that's a, there's some truth in that. Being around people who you want to be around, being around good environment. I'm not saying it's not a good environment, but, you know, it was definitely, uh, it was definitely something. I was like, I'm good, you know. And shout out to everybody who was there because those are the people, you know, who were really showing up. You know, and until maybe I'm ready to sit there the full time, I don't don't know, maybe my opinion is invalid. But I'm able to sit here and talk to you about it because that's my opinion. 
and um, I don't have the best opinion. That's for damn sure. Um, you know, I'm just a young guy with a with a mic, and I don't want anyone to confuse um, what I'm saying as the truth because it's just the opinion. You know, you go into a room with a hundred people. A hundred people are gonna probably most likely have different opinions, especially on something like that. And people will say, oh, I think it was good. Nah, I wasn't a fan. Oh, my family didn't win. My family did win. You know, you're going to ask. There's going to be some differences. So obviously, if you're listening to DJP, Dom Joseph Podcast, don't you think it's going to sound a little bit opinionated? Maybe. Anyway, so before uh, we bore you guys with more politic talk, you know, I, I, I used to think a lot of things as a kid. I, I used to. You know, I would kind of think about things that were going to be a big deal when I was a kid. You know, I talked with my buddy Rob. Shout out to him. Um, you know, earwigs back then, man, those used to be the biggest worry about as a kid. Okay, as long as I maybe do my homework, I eat my dinner, I eat my vegetables, and no earwigs get in my ear, I'm good. That was, that was, that was really all I had to worry about as a kid. You know, now you get older, you get, you're worried about other stuff. But you know what else I used to think was a really big deal as a, you know, as a young kid was getting stitches. Thankfully, I still have never had stitches. But, you, man, I used to think, oh, man, he's getting stitches was the worst thing. And, you know, I got to say, you know, like this funny story comes to mind. I may have told this story a while ago. I was in fourth grade and we went on this camp, you know, the camp retreat they bring you in fourth grade. I don't know if your school did it. If they didn't, I'm sorry. Um... But um, my cousin, yeah, he, he slipped and he cut his leg and he had to get uh, either stitches or they glued it together. And I remember even back then, I was like, oh, they can glue it now. Hey, we're good. And there's like dissolvable stitches now. And there's just like, there's even this like new, new technology I saw that there's like, you could just basically pull your skin together. It's like, obviously probably like minor cuts, but um. If you're in a pinch, maybe it would work. And I've been watching a lot of Grey's Anatomy, so maybe I'm in that doctor mode. And you know, sorry, excuse me. Um, the thing is about that is when I watch shows, man, I think about like what it would be like to be that person. Could I do that thing? And doctors is one of those things I don't. I, I think I'm okay with saying ah, I don't know if I could do that. And I mean, I'm sure if I put my mind to it and devoted, you know, what twelve years, eight years of my life to do it, yeah, maybe. But there's some parts of it where I'm like, ah, uh, do I want to be in the hospital all the time? Nah, not really. And the things they see, man, it's hard to, I, I think I said this last time, man, but they, they get paid pretty well. But you know what? I almost feel like they should get paid more, man, because saving lives, dude. You know, just imagine just 50 years ago and, you know, last, like appendix surgeries 50 years ago, they're cutting you open way bigger incisions than they are now. Now it's like robotic. They're like, oh, we just stick a tube through your stomach, and then we we weave, and we grab it, and we pull it out, and vacuum it out, and we're good. Yeah, was, you'll be out of the hospital in one day. You probably won't even have to be here. That's what happened to me. I got my appendix out. I didn't even have to stay in the hospital. I, I literally went there, and they outpatiented me at home. Outpatient means that hey, outpatient means like you get to go back home. I'm, I'm starting to learn the Grey's Anatomy lingo just a little bit. Um, Yeah, I'm like on season four, and it's a, it's a good show. It's a good uh, kind of like it started as a show that would we would just put on in the house. And now it's kind of like actually, you know, and it's cool because it feels like it's down the road because it's based in Seattle. Even though I know it's probably not filmed in Seattle. They use the shots and um, it, it just feels like they're down the road. Um, but what else is going on? Um, yeah, it's, people have been going to conferences Um a lot of people. This is kind of the conference time. I don't know if it's the like the biggest conference time of the year. And here's my thing, man. You know, you've been to one conference. You you may have seen them all. And um, I haven't been to a lot of big conferences, but you know, there's always comes that time when people are like, "Oh, hey, you know, have you ever been to my res?" You know, a lot of common. It's a common question. I feel like natives ask another native, "Hey, have you ever been up to my res?" And then, yeah, I'm from Tulalip. And people, oh, I've been to Tulalip. Yeah. You know, oh, would you ever come back? Oh, I'm good. I don't know, man. It's like, 
damn, did you not win at the casino or something? Like, did somebody leave you at the conference room all alone? Did you try to hit on an antsy and just, you know, they didn't want to go up to the room or something? Like, what do you got against Talayla? What, what, did you lose to them and battle all the nations? Or, you know, there's always that guy who just has something to say about somebody's tribe. Hey, have you ever came out to, you know, Navajo Nation before? You know, we have some, re- yeah, I've been there before. What happened? Eh, it's just you know went to conference and that's all you know. I didn't. So you you just went to the casino. You didn't go to like the beach or you know the canyon or you know ceremony or yeah, I mean ceremony is kind of of a reach, but you know you didn't like uh, you know you, nah. I went to the casino. I've seen it before. Those conference natives, dude. It's almost like ah uh, man. I feel like I could get you know canceled for this one too you know people go to your casino or something maybe yeah natives go to your casino and they think they're just an expert at it or something yeah i've seen your guys's you know casino it's nice you know but uh yeah that's i stayed there for a couple nights conference i don't probably won't go back but no big deal they had me uh we had our uh sobriety meeting there and you know, I didn't really know many people there, so I just kind of ate and played and didn't really win. So, yeah, probably never go back. And it's like, hey, I understand. Talayla paint the you know the biggest and best or whatever. Or, but still, like, if you've only been to the casino, like, is that a fair enough judgment to judge someone's tribe? I don't think so. And I'm not saying you got to go to everybody's house and say, oh, tell me a story, but. I just feel like that's always been funny to me. You ask somebody, oh, have you been to my res? Yeah, I've been to there. For like, they went to like a native tournament one time. It's like, yeah, I played in your guys' gym. And then we went home because we lost. And I don't know, just, you know, and the real truth is like, they came, got whooped, got beat up in a fight. Girl left him for Talayla, you know, traffic on the way home you know didn't have enough money got his letterman stolen his bag stolen (laughs) i don't know i just think that's pretty funny to me because a lot of people base it off conferences man and i know i may be repeating myself but um that's a it's a real thing that happens i think and um or they meet somebody too this is another thing oh it's you know you're like, oh, hey, nice to meet you. I'm Dominic. I'm from Tulalip. Where are you from? Oh, I'm from Navajo. And then some people go, oh, I've met a couple Navajos. Okay. Like, oh, I've met a couple Tulalips before. I know how you guys are. Well, I obviously know how you are right now because how you just said that because I, I don't know where we're going with this. Yeah. I was at your guys' casino before I didn't win. Isn't the point to not win at the casino? Isn't the point of the casino for you just to, you know, maybe win? You know, everyone always holds, like, losing, you know, losing at the casino as, like, a personal thing. Yeah, I went up to Tulalip's casino, and I didn't even win. You know, I don't really know what I think about them over there. You don't win at, you're most likely not going to win at the casino, so why are you holding it personal? I just think, that, yeah, I went down over to YAF's, uh, casino yeah there are people down there and i didn't win and uh yeah not a fan of them (laughs) i just i never understood it man yeah i went down to their uh their gift shop over there and they were selling t-shirts for like 30 bucks i I don't know what i think about them okay okay yeah every old people always like to forget everywhere in the casino is meant to make money somehow Oh, yeah, I went up to the valet. It was free, but then they want me to tip them, you know? Yeah, that's how valet works, dude. <laughs> like, there's a the casino is going to make, and I'm not just talking about Tulalip here. You know, I understand we have casino. I'm not just talking about us. I'm talking every casino is designed to make money. Oh, oh I went into Tulalip Casino. We used to like to go there all the time. There's no buffet now. Yeah, because there's a sports book there. Uh, well, I like my buffet more. Well, the casino likes the sports book more. 
And that's what's going to... I hate to tell you the truth. Because the sports book's bringing in more money and less dishes to deal with. I'm telling you that for damn sure. You know? Yeah, I've been down there before. I didn't win. So why... Why would I go down there? I don't know. Maybe a change of scenery. You know? It's just funny. And I, I don't know what that is or where it's from. Maybe it's the inner competitiveness of every tribe. And that's that right there, I think, is actually not from us. I don't think the tribes hating on one another is from us. And maybe some people say, oh, because back then they were they were stealing our routes and they were sinking our canoes. And, hey, that may be true. That may be true. But, you know, a lot of the I feel like some of it is also influenced by a lot of the white guys not wanting us to get along and to band together, because if we did. You know, that that would be not so good for everybody else, because we would be thriving, I feel like. And, you know, that's I'm, this is a hypothetical dream of Dom here. Dom's I have a dream pod or whatever it is, whatever you want to name it. But if you're still here with me. You know, we're still hanging in here for a couple more minutes. We got a couple more things we got to say. And um, I don't know what everybody else is up to, man. You know, I haven't asked you guys. Give me a call, 425 320 3641. Call into the hotline. Let me know how you're doing, man. Um, just like a wellness update. Um, I know there's a lot of people out there who are having good days. And, you know, it's also important to check on the people who are having good days, too. I saw this one video of these two guys going to the soccer game. And the guy who was really happy and uppity was with his buddy and his other buddy was kind of really reserved. And, you know, the the happy guy ended up not, you know, living. It was like a, what do you call it? Um, suicide awareness commercial. And I think there's a lot of truth in that. And if you're having, you know, a tough time, it's good to ask for help. It actually takes a lot, a lot to ask and acknowledge that you need help. And if you are kind of deflecting and you're kind of like, oh, I'm, I'm having the best life ever and I'm doing this. And it's like, check on that guy, too. Maybe they're actually having a good day, you know. But um, I would I would advise to reach out to them, too, because who knows what they're going through. And that's, you know, that's something you never I know it's cliche to say but you never know what somebody's going on. You know, somebody could lose their job, man, next like tomorrow. You know, you may not have a job tomorrow. You may. You, I don't even like to say this. Your brain could do what it wants. You don't knock on wood on that. You know, if you're driving, find something to knock on. But, um, yeah, man, I've been trying to listen to some um, motivation stuff, and that really reached out to me. They said, check on people who are doing good, too. And um, so I guess I'm going to try to incorporate that a little bit. And um, what else has been going on? Um Let's see. Making oh yeah, dude. This is something. You know, these are my last two things I'll I'll leave with you guys. Um, one of my buddies actually who was on the pod, I'll just say that for all that, because I don't want to share their information. So if you want to kind of guess who it is, you can, but I'm not gonna tell you. Um, one of my buddies who was on the pod um is getting married. Congratulations to him and his uh, girlfriend or fiance, as I should say. Um it's getting to that point where we're proposing people having kids this is like the age where it's not like you know like when you were 19 or you're 21 and you're like oh they're getting married like whoa you know like now it's like 27 it's like oh that makes sense you know oh they're having a kid good for them you know and um but the thing that always makes me laugh and it will always make me laugh is kitchen aids kitchen aids are something that people mix with and they bake with and i just feel like buying a kitchen aid is almost just like I don't know. You got to have a lot of money to just walk in somewhere and get a KitchenAid. You know, I feel like the real way to get a KitchenAid, you know, just getting married. You know, you want a KitchenAid, just get married and put it on the registry. It'll pop up somehow. You know, so that's the that's the hack of getting a KitchenAid. If you really want a KitchenAid, just get married, man. I mean, I got there's some truth in that, I think. And um, I'm not married. I'm not married yet. But uh, I understand that that probably is a way to get one. Or... Maybe you just really want to start baking. That's another good option, too. And um, my last point I'll leave you guys off with is uh, it's a funny one, I think, is um, sorry. You know when you like you sniff something really bad and you're always trying to make someone sniff it? Oh, man. So there's this there's this meme of this guy going in the Walmart and he sprayed the 
the the liquid fart spray or whatever in a candle and had this lady smell it. And he's like, hey, you know, this just didn't smell that good to me and I want to return it. And um, the lady was like, oh, this smells like, you know, like ass. And it's funny because her instant reaction was to turn to her coworker. She's like, you sniff it. And they're like, no, I don't want to sniff it. Bro, just, and just sniff it, dude. You know? You know, you're like, oh, you take a whiff of something, like some old milk. Or, oh, dude, smell this. Just join in the camaraderie, and camaraderie or however you say it. Just join the fun and just smell it, man. Like, it's not going to kill you, but it's like, it's funny to me. I don't, that's funny to me. I don't know. Some people don't think it's funny to smell gross things. But, you know, if I if I inhale, inhale some gross milk and I'm just like, oh, man, smell this. And you walk away, I don't want to smell it. Oh, man, lame. Don't you, just lame you know i want to be around someone who's like all right let me try oh man that does you know that's just funny to me um but you know i think that's all i have for you guys today um you know keep it light keep it good and um you know enjoy the sun today or wherever you're at i don't know where if you even have sun going on i know there's snow going on in some parts of the countries and world um but yeah um have a good time go for a workout get your uh, chores done that you have to do i was you know what? I was scrolling on TikTok for like an hour. I, I went for a run and then uh, shameless plug there. I was not trying to be like, oh, yeah, I'm a run guy. But like I was having some good momentum and I sat down and I got on my phone. So, you know, that phone, man, it's dangerous. You know, parents weren't uh, joking when they say it's that damn phone because it is that damn phone. Um, but, yeah, I'll see you guys um, next week, hopefully, if not the next week right after. Um, but, you know, I'll be here. And um, I'll see you guys next time. Hoi!